Let's go through all of today's Tesla stock news. And we do have some good Tesla stock news, which I think is driving the stock higher up today. But let's start with ARK Invest. Kathy Wood continues making a big mistake with Tesla stock. She just sold almost $100 million worth of Tesla stock. On March 23rd, I made this video. Kathy Wood just made a big mistake with Tesla stock, and that was because she sold Tesla stock and she bought these stocks, Block, Coinbase, and Teladoc. While at first, Tesla stock went down a little bit, since then, it returned 34%, almost 35%. On the other hand, Block, for example, returned 6.95%. Coinbase produced a really juicy return of minus 21%. And her last pick produced a return of almost 5%. So instead of making a huge gain, she had a loss overall by making this move. Let me be clear, I really like Kathy Wood. Her research and ideas about Tesla stock are often spot on, but her other picks mm, in the last five years her fund produced minus 6.2 percent in the long term she will probably do fine i understand she wants to rebalance because it's over 10 percent but look at rkq right now it has 16 percent in tesla stock and interestingly that fund produced much better returns in the last five years giving you a return of 52 percent not bad although not as good as S&P 500, which would be my second favorite stock after Tesla stock, although I only own Tesla stock in my stock portfolio. The deal is still too good for Tesla stock. And billionaire Ron Barron has a 52% allocation to Tesla stock in one of his funds. Then look at Meet Kevin's ETF, PP. It has produced a 61.5% return year to date instead of ARK Invest 45%, simply because Kevin has a much higher allocation to Tesla stock. It is 28.37% currently. I think certainly up to 25% is very reasonable for an allocation to Tesla. I'm talking about a bigger fund. And in Kathy's case, she doesn't have to sell Tesla stock. She just can't add more Tesla stock to her portfolio if it exceeds 10% of her portfolio. It's almost tempting for me to just create a fund, allocate, let's say 40, 50, 60% to Tesla stock, and then just pick a few other stocks and that fund would be every single fund pretty much out there if you give it about 10 years or so and possibly a lot less years would be required there was a short tv segment about kathy's recent decisions let's see what they got to say you know without being too harsh the fact that arc fund has done so poorly the last three years despite having tesla in it really just speaks to the the misfires and basically all the other picks i mean you had a stock in tesla that um you know, over the last five years, percentage-wise, what did we go up in Tesla? Yeah, over the last five years, a thousand percent in Tesla. So you got a thousand percent in one of your main holdings, and uh, fund uh, still uh, underperformed over that period, with the Ark's five-year return down five and a half percent versus the S&P 500's sixty percent over that period. So despite Tesla's thousand percent gain, they still managed but to underperform uh, by 60% plus. So I guess the stock picks, I don't know. Uh, is this a good thing going in the ARK fund or is it a kiss of death? Well, I would say for the ARK fund, it is very uh, diversified. So they're not really concentrated in one name or the other, but you do see this consistent rebalancing, which is why I don't really check out the charts when it comes to the ARK ETS, because when you have these uh, steady movements uh, in the underlying uh, performers within the the the, uh, the ETF in itself, it's really hard to try to pinpoint where uh, you find areas of support or resistance here. Now, yes, we have also talked about uh, their sell in NVIDIA. They sold it a little bit early. Uh, uh, now, obviously, they still have exposure, but they did not see the huge run up uh, as much as maybe some other funds that are uh, a little bit more passively managed here. So, no, I'm not sure if it's going to be the kiss of death. If you look at communication services, uh, compare that to the technology sector, it has still lagged and there is still some potential upside from a technical standpoint if you look at a weekly chart. But overall, I mean, you know, RK, I'll give it some credit. It's up around 38 percent year to date. That's some pretty good performance for an actively managed ETF at this point. True, but it's nowhere near as impressive as Tesla's 137% year-to-date return. And to the point of it being an active fund, too, right? The performance of the fund 
actually doesn't necessarily reflect the performance in, in it's not entirely reflective of the important performance of the companies because it's also the timing of when they get in and when they get out so okay. some of that has been a little bit off uh, all right uh, but uh, nice to keep track of too given the symbolic nature of uh, Mrs. Wood and her team and how uh, seriously folks uh, take their vision of the future. Which is why I tried to figure out the fair value for the stock today and then I just keep buying as long as the stock is selling under that fair value. And now today's Tesla stock news and we have some good news. Check this out. Tesla made in China weekly insurance numbers came in at 16.4 thousand. That's about 2,000 more than the last week. Many Tesla bears and even some Tesla bulls said that we will no longer see this delivery wave at the end of a quarter, but this is proving otherwise. We are now significantly ahead of the previous quarter, and I think we are going to have a record quarter. I think Troy is going to increase his delivery estimates. If I add this line here, it's hard to say how Tesla will not have another record quarter unless something really goes wrong. Roland is feeling pretty bullish. He took the numbers from this week, which we just got. And if the remaining weeks are like this, then we will have 157-ish thousand deliveries. That would be a clear record and 157,000, whoa, that would beat quite a few expectations, I think. Gary Black is certainly happy with these numbers. Just to keep expectations realistic, remember that usually the next few weeks are maybe a bit higher than the previous weeks, but the last week is certainly always quite a bit lower. So while 157 sounds a bit maybe too optimistic, I think 150 is certainly in play. James is forecasting 450,000 deliveries for this quarter, and if everything goes perfectly, he expects 470,000 deliveries, which would be amazing. Troy right now is at 439,000, and the analyst consensus is at 447,000. Next, Elon Musk said today that Tesla doesn't expect to begin producing their semi in larger volumes until the end of 2024, citing battery supply constraints. And I think that is to some extent expected. If we go back to the investor day, we learn how not quickly 4680s are ramping. And if you look at the stock, this is roughly when Sawyer tweeted and the stock didn't really go down all that much. At one point it went down 1%. So the market, I think, has largely expected this. But also let's not forget that Elon earlier said that Currently, the semi does not use 4680s. Anyway, there's a bit of a debate on Twitter going on whether the 4680 RAM has an issue or not, or if it's just an issue about the 2170 cells. Let's also not forget that the Nevada factory is being expanded and it will take a little while to do that. Tesla Giga Berlin now produces Model Y cars in all five colors, which is good. Tesla is doing a small promotion in the UK. Tesla is offering free wall connectors to anyone who purchases a Tesla at a Model Y and Model 3 test drive event in the UK. The latest Tesla update will let you preview all nine of Tesla's cameras. And this is really cool. The refresh Model 3 version is rumored to have ventilated seats. I love this. The current vehicle is missing this sort of luxury. And to me, it's actually pretty important. It's also rumored to have ambient lighting, which would be nice. And an upgraded sound system. The current sound system is already really good. But improvements are always welcome. In 2017, Toyota said that they will have solid-state batteries and EVs by 2022. So now they just moved the target date to 2027. And James is speculating that in 2030, Toyota will ask the Japanese government for a bailout. That sounds reasonable. What's also interesting is James is getting bullish about full cell driving. I mean, you wouldn't really see anything like that from James before. He did not put any value really from FSD to his Tesla valuation model in the past, but that seems to be changing perhaps now. And I think over time, you will see a lot more Tesla stock investors making that change as well. Interestingly, Toyota investors are finally calling the board chairs ouster over the Japanese car makers low move to EVs. Anyway, for now, I think Toyota should really just forget about solid state batteries and at least try to make some EVs. We got good inflation numbers, so the interest rates are less likely now to be increased further. 
that probability is now only 4.7% that we are going to get a rate hike tomorrow. Just a day before, that probability was at 21% roughly. We have more good news, Stellantis, which owns Jeep, Ram, Dodge, Chrysler and others, they are now also seemingly in talks with Tesla about the Tesla connector and I think it's really just a matter of time before they make a deal as well just like Ford and GM did. Which will then force other companies to also follow as well. So I expect more announcements in the future certainly from other automakers. Elon Musk today was also interviewed at this conference. I'll play just a small clip. So far, we don't have any good footage, so the audio is not exactly great. The post may will be uh, electric. That's likely to happen, I think, before the end of this decade. I think Elon is going to be right on this one. Elon Musk just tweeted this, if Apple competes against the whole world, Apple will have the whole world against it. This is not a winning scenario. This is in response to this tweet that says social media platform backed by former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey is facing removal from the App Store by Apple. I think Twitter is safe, at least for now, although there was a moment earlier when we were slightly worried about that for a brief moment when Elon went to war with Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple. And in this video, I talk about why Tesla board members are not buying more Tesla stock. My name is Matt Posius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.